Are you immersed in a sea of business advice and education, but not sure what to embark on first? Instead of adding to the ocean of information, we're here to help you navigate it like a pro. The Wayfinding Growth Podcast will help you take a deep dive into new actionable strategies, tools, and tactics to help you grow. So start charting a course for business growth as you explore a better way to grow further, faster, with your hosts, Remington Begg and George B. Thomas. And here we go. We're back again for another episode, episode six of Wayfinding Growth. I'm super excited. The, the conversation that we're having today is going to be super, super dope. Remington, Mr. Begg, if you will, the captain of this ship. How are you doing today? I'm doing great, George. What about you, sir? Oh, snap. I'm doing excellent because, because, and not that people who have been on the show historically have not been friends because really they are friends. I like having friends. Friends are a good thing. You should have more friends, listeners and viewers. But today, today we get to talk to a really great friend, known him for years on the socials, met at a couple different events. And the topic we're going to talk about today is helpful communication as a marketing and biz dev strategy. It is the man, the myth, the legend, Dan Moyle from Interview Valet. Dan, why don't you let the community know a little bit more about you and especially uh, Interview Valet because I think it's very relevant to the conversation that we're about to have today. I appreciate that intro. <laughs> the man, the myth, the legend. Gosh, I need my wife to hear that. No, um. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for having me, guys. Uh, man, I'm, I'm super stoked to be here, too. Is that, is that a word? Super stoked? So, so I'm Dan, as you said, George. Uh, I work for a company called Interview Valet. Uh, so me personally, man, I love uh, communications. I love inbound marketing. I love the, the digital world. I've been doing marketing for uh, getting close to a decade now. And came before that, came from journalism. I was a TV news producer So, so for like almost 10 years. So for the last 18 years, whatever it's been. I mean, I've been working with building audiences and talking to, with people and giving them information. So I love what we're doing with podcasting right now. So the viewers and listeners, I'm, I'm stoked to be here. At Interview Valet, what we do is we work with our clients to uh, teach them the podcast interview marketing strategy, which is essentially taking your message and, and reaching your new market uh, in podcast interviews. So it's going on podcast, it's uh, talking, you know, being a great guest, it's sending people back to your website, it's building that SEO power, building brand awareness, uh, helping people, all that kind of stuff inbound, right? Very inbound uh, in podcasts specifically. So we work with some amazing thought leaders around the world. Uh, in fact, I just had a, a call last week, I think it was, with somebody from New Zealand. So we are wow. working with people all around the world to get their, their message out. It could be authors, coaches, brands. We work with a couple of different SaaS companies, uh, just some amazing people. So that's, that's us. And I'm, I'm happen to be the CMO. So the global CMO of interview valet. Hey, let me tell you this. Like you should probably hit that on your, if you're listening to this on the app and you got like that, go back 30 seconds, you should hit that about twice right now and listen to all the things that Dan listed out of like, if you do this thing with podcasting, with interview valet, this is what it does. You know, things like thought leadership and being helpful. And I'll say in there, gaining more trust with potential customers. Like it's super dope. You should check it out. Yo, here's the thing. Let's go ahead and get into this. All hands on deck. Let's hoist the sales and set a course for your company's growth. Remington, let's get into this. Yeah. So this section is about navigational instruments. So what we want to do is talk about the tools that are needed to kind of get in and get started. Um, so kind of let you take it from there. For me, helpful communication and it, whether it's marketing, business development, sales, internal communications, building a culture. I mean, it's all about being helpful to me. Um, I love George, when we were talking recently, what, what you say about being helpful, human, humble, uh, I, I love that whole outlook. So I think of helpful um, as, as the, the new sexy, right? Um, and I just think that's, that's the best way to be wherever you are. And so some of the tools I use, I, I use these tools because the strategy behind them helps me to be more helpful. So one of the tools I love is obviously video. And one of the, one of the specific, very like, let's get focused here. We use Loom to record a video into an email and send it to somebody rather than just text all the time, which sometimes text is best, right? I mean, I might be reading that email in a quiet area where I can't watch a video right now and that's fine. But there are times when simply sending words on a page just 
it just doesn't do the, the, the job you want, right? You need some nonverbal communication. You need to hear the, the beat of the conversation. If I'm going to be a little bit sarcastic in a funny way, not, not mean, but if I'm going to be sarcastic, like you can't read that in text, right? So I want to be able to come across that way in video. So we, I use Loom a ton. In fact, one of my favorite ways to use it right now is when we have a new client come on, rather than just sending them a reminder email, like, hey, in a couple hours, we're going to talk. Here's the information. I mean, that's boring. doesn't get their attention. doesn't make them feel welcome and gain their trust. So I send, I record ahead of time. As soon as they're on board and I got the, the whole system working, I go in and I record a Loom video and just say, Hey there, you know, if, if Remington, you were joining us to say, Remington, it's great to have you on board, man. I'm so excited you're joining Interview Valet. Look, this is just a quick welcome email. Down below, you'll see our information for the Zoom meeting. You can tap in on your phone. You can call in. You can sign in with video. I'll be there taking notes. You get to just sit and tell us the answers to the questions, just like a podcast interview. It's going to be great. I look forward to seeing you soon. And to me, that's so much more helpful and engaging than just text. So Loom is a huge tool we use. Gosh, to be helpful uh, for our team internally, we use Boomerang in order to time out emails. So we use everything in, in, in a Gmail platform. Um, but you can use Boomerang to time those emails and send them out later. So let's say, for instance, I love being connected to my phone. If I'm in the evening and, and my, my family's busy and, and I want to right. answer an email but not train the client in order to, like, they're going to be like, well, you answer emails on Sundays, don't you? I'm not going to do that. I'm going to send it on Monday morning. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. So, we have our, our team do that. We make sure our whole team knows that, um, that they should be using something like Boomerang to not train the clients to have them at all hours of the night. So, those are a couple of uh, navigational, uh, wayfinding instruments that we use. I like what you're saying about Loom. Um, Loom's, Loom's making some serious moves in the market, too, right now. I, I see some big, big changes that they're going after market share. Mm -hmm. um, for sure. We've used other tools too. Um, soapbox. And it's funny this morning, I actually recorded, you know, I always tell people you get, get an email. And if someone doesn't understand you explain it once, like you have to make sure that something else accompanies that. And so the video has been perfect. Um, and often puts out any fires that are being lit based on miscommunication. So mm -hmm. you're a hundred percent on point there. Yeah, definitely. Video helping to simplify the complex since 2000. Well, I don't know. We've been doing video for a long time. Since YouTube. <laughs> yeah, since YouTube. Well, actually, there was like Viddler and a whole bunch of stuff before that. But we digress. Hey, folks, listeners, viewers, this week's episode is sponsored by our very own HubSpot Launchpad Workshops. If you're thinking about using HubSpot or you've been using HubSpot for a while and you're just not getting that ROI, hashtag return, on investment, make sure you go to the show notes, check out the link, and check out the HubSpot Launchpad Workshop. It's time. Ding, 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 ding. Uh, that was more of like a, a ding, ding, ding for a boxing match, not like the ding, ding, ding of a bell by a dock. Anyway, not trying to fight anybody. Remington, what about charting the course today? So ch with, you know, charting the course, I've got a, a couple questions for you here, but specifically around, you know, we talked about this helpful communication and um, you know, from a marketing and a biz dev side. So I'd love to hear like the marketing side of this and your, your opinion of the biz dev, because this podcast is very much about helping people grow. And I think a lot of times we immediately go to marketing cause it's shiny, but biz dev is like that, the engine, you know, in the hot rods. So let's, let's kind of think about it that way. So when we're talking about these questions, just try and hit both sides for me, because I think that you, I'd love to hear your, your points on either side. So we've got, um, so who needs to be the captain of the ship? So if we're starting this strategy, either either side of this, like who really needs to take ownership of it, make it happen? Gosh, that's a great question, Remington. And and, and let me say too, let me go back real quick. I, yeah. I look at marketing and biz dev as very tied together. Mm -hmm. um, I almost think like like it's one and the same in, in a way. I look at marketing as as the the foundation to everything else. I don't, as the CMO, I don't need to be like over everyone as is like this big manager, right? But I am the one who comes in as, as the servant, as the foundation to, to helping everyone get what they want done, done. I serve sales with their great content, hopefully, and bringing people in. I serve um, the early marketing. I serve biz dev, everything. So with that said, that's kind of how I see that. But anyway, to, to be the captain, I think leadership has to come from the, the top down in one way. So okay. you have a CEO or a president, they need, they need to be the captain. They need to be the one saying, here's what we want. I think then very closely knit to them right at their hip ought to be a CMO or director of marketing or VP of marketing, whatever you want to call that, your, your head of marketing. You know, I know a lot of companies may be very small and may not have a head of marketing. Probably that means your CEO kind of wears that hat for a while then, your founder, right? I think, so I think it needs to come from the top down because if, 
if they, if you don't have that support from the top, they're not your captain. You've got nobody really manning that rudder, so to speak. And, and you're just going to go in circles. If so, for instance, at interview valet, Tom Schwab is the founder and our, our CEO chief evangelist officer. I uh, doesn't want to be an executive wants to be an evangelist. Very I love nice. that. So there, are, so there are times when, when our, our paths cross a ton, right? I'll be working on the website. He'll add a page. We'll do this. So it's very tied together. We're, we're partners in this night. And I love that. But if he didn't support what I want, when I want to do helpful communications, I'd have nowhere to go. You know, I, I can't, so he's, he's my captain. I'm his, uh, his second mate, I guess that would be. Uh, so we're, we're partners in it, I think, but I think it definitely has to come. You have to have that buy-in from the top, really. Lead from the front. I, it's a big part of my, you know, how I run business. But so when we're, when we're thinking about that, if we have people who see a need for this, and this kind of goes back a couple episodes to when Marissa Smith was talking about EOS. A little bit, but what's your opinion about so the videos and the emails? I feel like that's something that doesn't have to necessarily come from leadership, and it could kind of be like proved by doing because yeah. it's free. Loom's free, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. So, so those strategies could really be implemented by anyone. Kind of talk to kind of talk to that. Would you say like go for it? Try and show how you can improve communication? Yes, absolutely. Okay. Oh, always, always be testing, always be proving, always be trying new things. So a great example of this in, in Interview Valet, uh, one of the, the functions of our team is to go out and pitch podcast hosts, right? Kind of like a PR agency, you know, you, you pitch people. Well, we call that team the, the porter team. They're the podcast porters. They're bringing people on to podcasts. That's what we call them. We also like beer. So porter works for us. We couldn't, nice. we couldn't call them the podcast stouts, right? Nice. <laughs> so anyway, so the, the Porter team, you know, they go out and they, they pitch uh, our clients to podcasts. And of course we use email, but then that gets lost in the shuffle. So one of our Porter, one of our Porters, one of our team members decided to try video and she is not a video person. She's not a get up in front of people person. She likes to be behind the keyboard and do it that way. That's her comfort zone. But she decided I'm going to try this. And she tried it with a, a safe bet. Uh, one of our podcast hosts that we have a great relationship with uh, Wally Carmichael from men of abundance. He does a lot of videos. And so she had already started to kind of test those waters. So she decided I'm going to try this. And she recorded a video. Hey Wally, this is Karen. This is what I have. This, this person's really great because of this, this person's really great because of that, blah, blah, blah. And you can see their one sheets attached. So I just, I'd love to pitch these, these people to you. Let me know what you want to do. And she tried that and she did a couple of those and got feedback from Wally. She tested it. She tried it with somebody safe. She proved that it worked. He said yes to everything she sent to him and came back to us and said, here's what I did. What do you think? We're like, holy, yeah, that's awesome. Um, so yeah, so she actually led from within and got me thinking about how to use Loom more often. You know, as, as the awesome. CMO, the video guy, you think I would have done it, but it came from within. So that's awesome. Because I think that, you know, there's a lot of opportunities, especially as you have multiple levels in your organization, you can start to get a little disconnected. People that are in there doing it day by day might see those things as huge wins while it might not be something we think about all the time. So mm -hmm. great points. You know, it's... I love a couple of things that I've heard in here. First of all, you have mentioned multiple people already. So Dan, I know when we get mm -hmm. to the captain killing it section, you're going to do really, really well. Cause it seems like you're almost built to mention folks when you're teaching and educating and building thought leadership, which by the way, we're doing on a podcast. I realize this just got very meta cause we're talking about helpful communication <laughs> and a podcast company on a podcast that's using video and audio anyway. I'm curious because we might not be the norm. Like what is the, you know, where have you been or where have companies been like historically, what is the narrative that most companies have had around this topic of using helpful communication for marketing slash biz dev? You know, I think a lot of people are kind of scared of the helpful communication side of it and not necessarily like cognitively scared of it. I think they just don't think about it. So when I was at the mortgage company that I used to be at before interview valet, I was the marketing director there and I was invited to speak at, at inbound um, HubSpot's big event. I hesitate to call it a conference, but kind of what it is. But, uh, but I was invited to be at, at, at inbound and I spoke on inbound marketing in a boring industry. <clears throat> now, first of That's all, where I met you. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, first of all, to be called a boring industry, I, my first thought was, wait, am I boring? What are you saying? Um, but I got over that and, uh, and realized, <laughs> that, realized that, that mortgages are boring. And, and honestly, at the end of the day, most businesses, I mean, w look, we're not selling sports cars or motorcycles or beer or something what you would think of as quote unquote sexy, right? Sexy advertising, the, the super funny Super Bowl commercials or the amazing, you know, well done film produced commercials is what we think of as kind of your 
a lot of people think of as your traditional marketing and advertising, right? So I, so when I spoke there at, uh, at Inbound and I said, look, sexy advertising isn't what we all do, but if we can be helpful, that's the new sexy. And so that's, I think, for me where it shifted. And I think that's where a lot of companies are is they think that marketing, biz dev, advertising has to be this, this viral thing or it has to be super produced and amazing, whatever. And they're just thinking, man, I, I just can't really do that. Well, let's go backward and let's start with thinking of being helpful to everybody we're in touch with, right? To me, marketing is much easier when your customer service is great and you're being helpful. Your sales team is helpful. They're helping people answer those questions rather than just saying, don't worry, I got this. You need our widget, blah, blah, blah. Like they're helping. You get, they get people to know you, to like you and to trust you they're going to buy from you without you even asking. And so I think if we take that helpful side and put it everywhere, that's where people haven't really thought of that. And, and like I said, not cognitively scared of it, but just scared of the idea that, well, gosh, if I help everybody, they're not going to buy from me, right? If I'm just being helpful, they're not, they're not going to buy from me. They're not going to do business with me. They're not going to want me to be a business partner or whatever it is. And that's just, I think, not true. I think that's some really good points that, you know, and I think a lot of platforms are even going more towards this how helpful you know, helpful is the new winning, if you will, for, for all that stuff, obviously HubSpot. And then we've got Drift doing some of that stuff too. So I think that that's a very interesting approach. I think one of the things that you're saying without saying is it's, it's really this, you said it earlier, it's a very human way of communicating, like seeing and hearing, I think just adds that likable side of things, hopefully likable um, if you're on video, but you know, that's, that's a huge piece there. So let's say we want to get started as an organization and we want to try and start to like turn the page and go more this helpful route and, you know, and, and improve our communication. Where, where does that start? What is like the North star? What are we looking to accomplish as an organization? And I could go a couple different ways on this. I mean, if you're talking like kind of technical tool side of things, I think, I think thinking of video is one place to start. I mean, truly getting over, cause a lot of us are a little bit scared of the camera. You know, I remember when I, when I started at Amera first at the mortgage company and, and I said, we're going to do video. And they said, awesome. I said, we're going to interview the sales team and make these little videos. They said, awesome. And I said, who's the host? And they said, you. And I went, wait, what? <laughs> no, 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 I'm a writer. I'm a producer. I'm not a, I'm not a, a talent. They said, no, no, you'll be able to do it. And they believed in me, thankfully. Um, and I did it and I sucked really bad for a while <laughs> and I've gotten, I think better over the years. Um, but it's, it's that idea of getting over that fear of the camera and, and, and if we're going to, you know, embrace the suck, uh, George, right. Um, or if we're going to, you know, just kind of, kind of get through it. Right. And so I think there's, that's one place there is, is video. I think on the other side of it being our North star of being helpful comes down to just that, that culture shift of we're not trying to sell. We're trying to make the world a better place as unicorns and rainbows and maybe quote millennials as sounds and people kind of go, ugh, really? Um, I think that's I think that's what we're what we're called to do is make the world a better place. I mean, look, you Remington got into business not just to make money. I mean, that's certainly what you need to pay the bills and everything else, right? But I I think knowing you, you got in, into the into business to help other companies be successful, right? You you want to make the world a better place, and and so you work with people who who do that. Your clients, I gotta believe, aren't you know terrorists and and arms makers and like right. you know bad people, right? You're working with people who want to make a world a better place. And that's what we do at Interview Valet. That's what, um, you know, HubSpot does. That's what, uh, you know, I think a lot of businesses, small and large want to do. And so thinking of it in that way, it, just making that shift of, okay, are we here to just make numbers? No. Do we need to make our numbers? Yes, of course. But you know, we need to make that shift from, from within and hopefully from the top down, if we need to, of, of making the world a better place. That to me is, is our North Star. I feel like I need to pass the plate, man. Like, amen. Like, you know, it's just like, dang, gone. Like, Dan started to preach right. there for a minute. That, well, was, that was awesome. I'm just saying. Well, there, there for, those, for those watching, I just turned my mic flag. Dan Moyle, inbound evangelist. Uh, I know that's your, one of your titles, George. Evangelist, <laughs> man. I, I, I preach. Sorry. <laughs> I love it. Because, hey, it's, it's who we are. And it's funny because... You don't know why, because it's so authentic. You just do it anyway, which I go into part of what you were just talking about is about, and Remington, you said, hopefully good. Like the human side is if you're just generally a good human, then the, the play show. on authenticity works. If you're a douchebag, don't be authentic because it's not going to work. And that whole human <laughs> side thing is just going to be terrible for you. I'm letting you know. Um, and although, so although, 
<laughs> Let me throw this out, George. If you're if you're a douchebag and you want to do business with other douchebags, y'all go ahead and do your, your tribe. That's cool. <laughs> Maybe it'll work because I don't want to work with you. I'm going to say that is one He's subscription. I do not want to be uh, subscribed to the Daily Douchebag Newsletter. Uh, so if you're out there, please do not send me an invite. My email is not george at impulsecreative.com. <laughs> Forget that you ever heard that later on in the episode. Hey, but here, let's do this because I think it's, it's interesting. You were kind of preaching. I was joking about you preaching there. And it was kind of not 50,000 foot, but 20,000 foot view on like what should people be doing. But Dan, I really want you to talk about like actionable. Hey, you're about to jump into the trenches. This is what you should do today to get started with this helpful communication, whether it's transitioning the culture, whether it's you taking leadership of yourself and going into it, whether it's trying to get the buy-in that we've talked about, like what can people do to just get going? I think wherever you are in the company, the thing to do today is to start that conversation. If you are internal and, you know, look, I, I hate to make things sound like a, a a cast system, but if you are low on the totem pole, if you're low on the ladder, um, whatever term you want to use, go to someone around you, go to someone above you and say, Hey, I really want to be helpful. I love, I love what our company does. I love this whole idea. You know, I want to be helpful internally. You know, if you are a, a specialist, let's say, and you report to a director or a VP, go to that person and say, how can I help our team be more successful? I want to turn this team into a helpful team. If you are the, the top of the ladder, I want you to go to somebody below you, or if you're in the middle somewhere, go to somebody above and below you. Go to somebody else and say, I want to think of our communications, internal, external, sales, marketing, everything as, as helpful. What can I do to help us, our team in some way? I think just opening up that conversation is, is a huge first step. It's very, and I think it's very um, authentic and vulnerable. You know, look, I, I want to be a better communicator. How can I, how can I help? That's what I, I, you know, my uh, response to anybody saying, hey, I got a question. How can I help? And I think just taking that first step is huge. So when as an individual, so I know you mentioned someone internally and I forgot their name, but someone internally brought this to you about the video working. <laughs> when do you as an individual, like what are things to look out for that communication is not working the way that it should? I think, uh, Look, things to look out for is when, let's say, for, let's use email as an example, right? Let's say you're either working with a client or somebody internally, or you're having a communication discussion and it keeps ping ponging back and forth and you just can't get the answer you want. Even after, let's say three replies, two maybe, communication isn't working. You have to stop, take a, take a step back and figure out how can, I, how can I make this better? It might be a video. It might be a phone call. <laughs> Heaven forbid we pick up a phone and call somebody. But I think, you know, it's, it's that, okay, if, if the person, the recipient isn't getting it, how can I, how can I fix that? So you, right away, you're going to, you're going to see that something isn't working. And, and that's where the communication breakdown is happening. It's not just a, a Led Zeppelin song, right? Was it, was it Zeppelin? I don't know. I'm going to screw that one up. But that communication breakdown <laughs> is, uh, is pretty plain to see, I think, in just as simple as, as an email, right? Or let's say, you know, if somebody is having some kind of an issue, let's face it, our companies aren't perfect. You know, we have it. We have issues at interview valet sometimes. Don't want to say that we're perfect, but, but yeah, no, it, it happens. Right. And so if somebody is asking a lot of questions or is, is ping ponging back and forth right there, you see that something is wrong. So immediately you can say, I want to be helpful. I want to figure out how to fix this video, a phone call, a text, uh, a video call, maybe, you know, get on zoom with them and just say, Hey, and we had, we had, a, we had a client recently who had a lot of questions and had some edits on what we call their, their one sheet for the, for the client. And I uh, had just a lot of things in the email of like bullet points and things. And I, and I, and I immediately thought, well, oh, gosh, they, they just don't get it or whatever. Right. So very authentic. I got defensive and rather than take offense, I took a breath and I said, okay, I need to have a conversation with this person because if I just send a list of, of like bullet points, responses, yeah, yeah like it's going to come across like a douchebag and I don't want to do that. So I sent him a message. Hey, uh, his name his name's Tim. I said, Hey Tim, can we have a conversation? I just, I just want to get on a, a quick call with you and talk. Oh yeah, sure. No problem. And we had a great conversation and it turned out that he came from a totally different background, a totally different idea. He was relatively new to, to that company that was our client. He was brought in into the communication later after we already had our kickoff call and other conversation, it was like, oh, okay. So we're just not, we're, we're misfiring here. We're not, we're not connecting, right? So I got to hear from him. He got to hear from me. We walked away feeling really good about it. It was awesome. So seeing those communication 
misfires should should be i i would hope pretty plain to see immediately and then i think just you know so for us at interview valley uh, we we had a, a all team call at one point we have one every every two weeks and we're all virtual teams so we are all over the country and we're on there talking and I, and I was talking a little bit about email and email agreements instead of calling it a policy a here's what you're going to do it was agreements I said, okay, look, here's a few things when you talk about an email, you know, reply all, um, when to not reply, when to take a breath, internal versus external. Do you always have to say, hi, Remington, hope you're having a great day. Hey, George, how are you? Like, if it's internal, I can answer you pretty quickly, almost like an I am. And don't take offense because it's not meant to be because I'm just busy. And so things like that. So we started with that too and, and said, you know, here's, here's how we can set the expectations. So I love the fact that first of all, and I don't even know if anybody just realized we switched from video uh, and helpful communication to like ninja freaking email strategies with your internal team. (laughs) So that's a bonus tip for you, by the way, by the way, I have to say this, Dan, I don't think that you could ever be considered a douchebag one, there's a Jack Johnson poster hanging behind you. Two, there's a guitar <laughs> hanging behind you. And three, you dropped a Led Zeppelin song reference in the episode. <laughs> Hashtag equals no douchebags here. Remington, how can people hear more about what we're doing and what we're learning from our great guests at Wayfinding Growth. We've got weekly show notes that go super deep into each of these episodes. And then we've got our monthly deep dive uh, newsletter that, that's coming out. So you've got to go to any one of the pages on wayfindinggrowth.com. There should be an orange box towards the bottom of the page that says subscribe now. Get in there. We won't spam you. We're going to send you only really, really great stuff. And, uh, you know, every once in a while, George or I might reach out to you and ask you a question about something. But the other thing is we want to make sure people are getting the value. So when you subscribe to that, it gives you the opportunity to give us back some info about what you would like to see or the questions that are just burning for you. If you're not subscribed, what you doing? Which, by oh. the way, if you're a listener... You didn't see that little juke move, but if you're a viewer, you did. Make sure you're checking us out on YouTube as well. So I love this section. I love all the sections, but I love this section of our podcast because I get to say this week's Captain Killing It, which means they're either a hashtag fail or a hashtag success. We like to shine the light on somebody who understands how to do business or communicate or sales or service or just grow their business in an awesome way. Dan, I think you might have somebody that we need to be rapping about. Who is this week's captain? Oh, I get to say it twice, people. Captain killing it <laughs> i george I, I just gotta say man i walk away from my conversation with you just smiling i love it and, and when i listen to the show and um, fired up man i know fired for real up. so captain killing it. so for me somebody who's killing it is i mean i got i, I tell you what man I, I guys i'm i'm fortunate to be surrounded by some amazing people but i but i wanted to pick one jeffrey shaw is an author uh he wrote a book called lingo and it's how to speak your customer's lingo, not, not just knowing your buyer persona, but really speaking their lingo and understanding them. Great book. Um, I've gotten a chance to know him over some conversations. He's a TEDx speaker. He has a podcast called Creative Warriors. Man, this dude is killing it. And if you want to better understand your customers and how to take your business to that next level, you know, for everybody, read, read his book, Lingo. That, that dude is awesome. Boom sauce. He's like, yeah, I just had that in my back pocket the whole time. Man, I, I, I read his book recently. <laughs> I listened to a couple of podcasts. My favorite episode of his actually is he interviewed the women who uh, organized the TEDx event that he spoke at. And he just yep. got really authentic with them. He was vulnerable. They were extremely helpful. All the things we're talking about, it was, it was great. It made me want to go out and, and come up with an idea for a TEDx talk. It's the Bermuda Triangle. Like, What makes this concept impossible for, for companies. I think one of, the, one, of, one of the things that makes it impossible is the idea that if we're helpful, people won't do business with us because we're giving things away. Helpful doesn't have to be giving things away. Helpful can be, you know, encouraging them and, and educating them and, and selling some things. If, you know, I didn't, I didn't buy brakes recently because uh, it wasn't helpful, right? It's helpful to have new brakes. So that mechanic that helped me see that I paid money for them, right? I gave them money. So the, one of the things is that fear of if I'm helpful and give it away my content, my information, they're just going to take it and do whatever they want with it. And some people will, and that's fine. 
you know, if I bring it back to like interview LA, if I, if I teach you how to go do podcast interview marketing and pitch yourself and everything and give you and tell you how we do it, you may go do it yourself. No problem. That's fine. We're at least building that category of podcast interview marketing, but more <laughs> people will come back to us and say, gosh, I can do this all on my own. You do it for me. We've been helpful. We helped them. They did business with us. Get over that fear. I think there's a bug in my office. Like Uh-oh. we literally, we, we literally <laughs> had this conversation today. This is, like, why, this like, is why we're just all good people. We, <laughs> we love, we love this podcast because it's like, we're in the trenches with all the viewers and listeners. Like Remington and I were talking about this concept, this thing that we figured out and we're talking about creating content. And one of the conversations around creating the content about the thing that we figured out is yeah, but, and, and here comes Dan helpful isn't giving things away and i'm like (laughs) dan let's circle back around because this isn't about us it's about the viewers about the listeners why do those who try uh or attempt to do this why do they fail you know at the beginning or midway through the voyage of being like oh okay let's be helpful and uh you know they start sailing away and then all of a sudden like some crazy crap happens i think two things that set us up for failure. Number one is giving up. We just give up. We just get to that, to that point where we're like, we're not seeing results and we just give up or we feel like we're too bogged down. It takes too much time. It takes too much effort. It takes too much, whatever. And we give up. I think the other thing is we measure the wrong things or we measure everything. But I think sometimes we, we forget that we, yes, we can measure a lot of things, but some of them are vanity metrics. Some of the things we just really can't measure and that's okay. You know, I I used to create eBooks um, and I know that we're kind of in that like, ugh, not another ebook world right now. But for a long time, digital content, digital ebooks, PDFs were my bread and butter. And they were short, man, 12 to 16 pages full of information, a lot of graphics or, or um, images or whatever, but it was good information. And, and some of those ebooks got downloaded around the country where I couldn't help them when I was in the mortgage industry. We only had certain states. But I tell you what, I was helping people. And if they would email me with a question, I'd tell them, number one, I can't speak for your state because I'm not there, but here's what I know about in general, what it does. And it began to create this universe where that mortgage company was extremely helpful. We had people call us and like, there's one guy that called us and said, I'm so angry. I can't stand it. My boss is like, what? I'm trying to look up the information on this particular mortgage and I can't find anybody but you. And I just had, I got to talk to you, I guess. She's like, okay, well that's good. Right? Well, yeah, but I just, I only have one choice now apparently. And it's only you (laughs) like, Okay. Because we just were helpful. And so, Boom. you know, but we couldn't measure that. I can't measure right. the ROI of helping people outside of my space and that's okay. Right. So yeah, yep. don't quit and don't focus always on every measurement, pick the right metrics. So I know earlier we talked about having the conversation around who to go after and have the conversation with about implementing or changing the way we communicate. So who's the pirate to watch out? For? I don't know. Nobody ever has in my way. I just plow through them. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> no. Oh, I think, I think, snap. <laughs> no, the, the pirates are the naysayers, man, right? It's the ones who still have that fear, whoever it is. And, and I, you know, I, I wish I could say, well, it's always going to be your, you know, CIO or something, right? Or whatever it is, but it's, but it's not, it's going to be anybody who is the naysayer that says, I just, I just don't get it. I just don't agree. I just don't. Well then, then let me try it. Right. If you're the person who's running into that pirate, the naysayers, if you have to ask the permission, ask permission to, to let you try it. If, if they're not someone who holds that permission key, just do it, you know, give them results, man. Show them that, you know, even if it's just a thank you email from somebody who said, gosh, you were so helpful. I appreciate it. I'm going to tell all my friends, Hey, look, show them this, right? Yeah, it's, it's the naysayers of the pirates. So just brush them off, man. Don't let them bother you. Now, unfortunately, that pirate might be your direct boss, might be the owner of the company, and you're going to have to negotiate, uh, navigate those waters, right? It may get tumultuous at times, but know that you're doing the right thing. Oh, he used my, my word. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Second Scrabble. week in a row, the word tumultuous has come out. You have to play that on Scrabble. I'm just saying, hey, Dan, quick question. If people want to reach out to you, if they want more information, where do you want to send them? As well as, do you have a resource or a place that you would like to send the Wayfinding Growth listeners if they want to learn more about uh, helpful communication, interview valet, all of those uh, things? Like, what what do you got for us? Yeah, absolutely, man. Thanks. Uh, So, interviewvalet.com forward slash wayfinding. Listeners and viewers can go there to get any kind of resources. Find me on the socials there. It's all in one spot. So instead of like, look everywhere, just go to interviewvalet.com 
forward slash wayfinding. Um, I've got some resources on there for, to help you be a better guest on podcasts. Um, I, I wrote a book about going from journalism to inbound marketing. They can get that there. Uh, they can find me at my social links there. I'll even put a link in there to go find uh, Loom and Boomerang, just a couple of resources. Uh, and I don't get this, no affiliate links or anything else. It's just there to help. So yeah, interviewvalley.com forward slash wayfinding. This has been amazingly awesome. Remington, do you have any kind of closing thoughts around helpful communication around Dan, around the craziness that has happened on this episode? The, the one thing I did want to tie in, and George, if you can find this link for our listeners and viewers, there was a small, short, tiny podcast that you shared with me, George, that talked about things you can do to, to I don't think it's effectively communicate, but it was like things you can do to enhance the customer experience. And one of the things that, that Dan's mentioned like three or four times helps solve for the, the buyer's remorse. And I wanted to just kind of drop that bomb here because all of those things, someone signs up with you and gets super excited and the communication is like, bam, 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 bam with sales. And then suddenly service or, you know, or implementing or doing the work suddenly is not, doesn't have the same, the same sequence. Let's um, make sure we drop in that link and feel free to speak up if you know exactly who that was. But that was, that was amazing. I think that ties in 100%. Yeah, absolutely. Remington. I will get that link. I'll put it in the show notes. It's actually Omar Zenholm, his podcast, which is amazing. And what's really amazing that you brought that up is not next week's episode because next week Remington and I will be going through this episode with a fine tooth comb, pulling out things that have been said and really giving you like the deep dive onto Dan Moyle's brain. That might be a little bit scary, but the week after that, we're actually interviewing Joey Coleman, who is the person who was on Omar's podcast, and we're going to be talking about buyer remorse and kind of the first hundred days of your customers and making sure they're in a good place and keeping them in a good place. But anyway, I digress. So viewers, listeners, <laughs> let's thank Dan Moyle for being a guest on our show. By the way, Woo! Woo we want to thank you for being a listener and engaging with us. Remember, he is Remington at ImpulseCreative.com. I'm George at ImpulseCreative.com. Let us know any things that we can help you navigate uh, you and your business through. We we know that there are those Bermuda Triangles. We know that you're trying to reach a destination. If you're listening to this show, make sure you go over to iTunes, leave a rating and review for us. If you're watching this on YouTube, hit that subscribe button, hit the bell, ding. I gotta get a dinghy sound like, I don't even think a dinghy is the bell. A dinghy is something else. Anyway, I'm totally jacking this up. Make sure you hit the bell so you get instant notifications. It is time for us to set sail. As always, we thank you for being part of the community. Until next time, make sure you are doing all you can do to leave the dock of mediocrity and sail into the sunset of success.